Welcome everyone to The Watch List, your weekly virtual TV guide right here on the Latin Nerds Network. Ready to go over all the shows, films, documentaries released on streaming over the past week. Give you a best recommendations or non-recommendations, as I'm sure that's going to occur today. And of course, at the end of the show, let you know what's coming out next week so you too can create your very own watch list. If you're new to the show, welcome. Subscribe below. Help us out. Of course, join us here every Sunday. I don't want to, I never want to hear, I don't know what to watch, what's on TV. We, that's what we're here to do to let you know what's on and what you should be watching, tuning into on a weekly basis. Joining me as always, of course, is our co-host, El Senor Jaime, aka Chewy. What it is, what it was, what it shall be. Happy Sunday, brother. Happy Sunday. Very busy week in streaming. A huge. This week. <laughs> huge week in streaming. Uh, this week's a little bit lighter. This, you know, Thanksgiving coming up. So, um, but that being said, uh, you know, hope everyone eats well and all that upcoming days i know we will i'm sure but that being said we have people have days off some extra time so there's a lot to watch or at least attempt to watch depending on your tastes so we're gonna go through this as quickly as possible because there's a lot to go through so we're not gonna mess around too much with tree so let's just let's just jump right into into the pool here let's start with the only movie released uh and that's i was on peacock uh, please don't destroy the treasure of foggy mountain this one here I guess written by some guys who are on SNL. I don't watch SNL anymore because I like comedy, so I don't watch SNL. Um, but the, <laughs> to the That's ch- rough, dude. Come uh, on. Come I'm on. Joke, I joke. I kid, I kid. Uh, I haven't seen SNL in years. I didn't. I haven't heard great things anyway. But that being said, I guess uh, this trio, the right, you know, the, a lot of the shorts, kind of like um, Lonely Island guys, you know. And basically, it's a story about the three childhood friends who, you know, looking for a treasure, this presumably a hidden treasure, or whatever the case is, blah, blah, blah. Um... I was, I was having a short leash this week. There's too many shows, too much stuff going on, and this is what happened here. I gave this about 25 minutes, and it was probably 20 minutes too long. This was not for me. Uh, it's just, it's a comedy, right? It's got to make me laugh. I don't give a shit about anything else. If you make me laugh, that's that's all that really matters. And this one just, it, it was not funny at all. It was, just, it was terrible. Um, it just, it tried so hard. It probably would have been a better sketch in you know, five minutes than it is a whole film. Maybe it got better at the end. I don't know. I was not enjoying it. This is a hard, hard pass. Uh, Chew your thoughts. No, I, I dug. I gave it forty minutes and I dug out. Oh wow, forty! Wow, an hour and a half. Yeah, I mean, I had I had a few moments here and there, but just too far in between to justify wasting your time, the viewer, on on ninety minutes on something that is better elsewhere. Yeah, that was too, too much, and even a week where there's not a whole lot to watch, I still. <laughs> It's still not. It's still not worth it. It's not. Yeah, it's just not funny, man. It it is not at all. It's a, it's a bad try. So this is one. It's a hard pass on both their ends for sure. Avoid it if you can. Um, next one. Let's go. The documentary. How to become a mob boss. This is on Netflix. Uh, mm-hmm. Four parter. Uh, no, I think it's a six, six parter. Six parter. Sorry, a thirty minute. Narrated by Tyrion Lannister himself. That's Peter right, Tyrion yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, thirty minute episode. So it's kind of a a quick watch. This one here. Uh, it's kind of a very tongue in cheek kind of a documentary. Yes. Where it's kind of going back to some of the, you know, the famous historical. Lay not, lay not the ground rules, how to become a mob boss, exactly. But in, in, a, way, in, a, yeah. in, a, in a very sarcastic uh, manner, because obviously, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, you're dealing with murders and, 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 and illegal activities, right? And, and it's not pretty, but it, yeah, very tongue in cheek. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was, I thought it was kind of funny and, and you know, some of it insightful because he does paint over some some very serious how they actually got there right not this not this joking and stuff right but i think it covers most of the the bases but the main main uh gangs that we've seen in our time you know whitey bulger john gotti al capone oh, pablo escobar i mean so it, it, and the, the one italian one uh, I uh camera. yeah 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 so yeah, one, one cool. of the yeah. legacy, legacy maf- mafiosos, right, from back in the day. So, but uh, very brutal, <laughs> very brutal. To say the least. Uh, but no, it, yeah, I treated it, I guess, different, right? You, it did, you learn about how they went, went, arise, rose up the ranks, right, to become who they were, obviously. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of mm-hmm. showing you pay by play. Hey, if you want to be a mob boss, this is what you got to do. do. This is what you got to do. You want to do this, you want to do that. So it's very tongue in cheek, very kind of funny. And then when you honest. break when you break the rules, this is what happens. Right, exactly. So it was very, it was very interesting. I, I liked the presentation; it was very cool. But in thirty minute episodes, mm-hmm. you can kind of watch this at your own pace, and mm-hmm. it's never boring. Very entertaining. If you know, I'm so some of these bosses we've heard of, we know, you know, we know Pablo Escobar. We've seen a hundred thousand shows of Escobar and Al Capone, but they've been they, this is a more in depth uh, as far as you know specifically what they did growing up, particularly in Al Capone's mm-hmm. case and 
it was really good. This one I really enjoyed. It's a good recommend on Netflix. A uh, quick short 30 minute documentary. So it's been very well done. I like this one a lot. Uh, this next one this is up to you, Chewy, because I don't have MGM Plus. Um, no, I did here yesterday. I was very, very impressed. And now down to 12 subscribers. So that's again on the upswing. So very good for MGM. Uh, I kid, I kid. MGM's got some good shows. Uh, but it's on Beacon 23. Uh, this is a, a, a sci fi show. Chewy can give us a little mm -hmm. detail starring, of course, uh, Alina Hedley. Uh, Hedy, sorry. From my Game of Thrones fame, um, yeah. What's 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 this, and is it worth it? Um, so obviously they dropped two episodes. Excuse me, I haven't seen that third episode today. Uh, heavy setup. Uh, so basically, these beacons are are these outposts out in space, kind of like black houses essentially, uh, manned, uh, and because they help navigate uh, ships through you know through the deeper reaches of space, right? And so when they don't, uh, shit can go wrong. Um, and this box starts with a mystery because the, the one uh, gentleman who's on this one beacon is not who he says he is, right? And so the first two episodes, you uncover the, the, the deeper mystery of something else going on. Um, so again, interesting, but it's still, still can't make a recommendation yet because it's still oh, too really? early. Okay. Yes, it's still too. I mean, like I said, it, it's interesting, but you know, we got it. We, we, you know, I need a, need, you know, one more episode to, to commit. Yes, I'm in or, or I'm out. Um, so it's rather it's teetered, it's teetered, right? I got to see where this next episode takes us. Okay, you know, you're a big sci-fi guy yourself, so mm -hmm. it seemed like your kind of show. Um, well, the first episode was very slow, right? So I'm glad they dropped two. The, the second one picked up because there's someone coming in, there's, there's a little heist action going on, right? I was like that. Uh, do you know something? And obviously, there's obviously advanced technology with 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 AI personalities that are on the ship, one not so. It's 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 it has a very interesting points, but you know let's 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 get to let's get to the finish line quickly. Let's see what's going on. Okay, fair enough. So yeah, maybe we can circle back if if it feels mm -hmm. if it's really improved. Let us know when the show ends and all that because uh, I was expecting yeah. to come out saying this is a a good recommend. So I'm kind of surprised to hear that. And well, I mean, I'm disappointed mean, to take with time. MGM Plus, yeah, yeah, because with NGM Plus, like all the other shows, I've, I've watched one two episodes and I'm in right. I right. Mean, yeah. Uh, the Billy the Kid from uh, Grandfather of Har Godfather of Harlem, mm -hmm. um, which obviously that was it was one of the that was one of the characters in in uh, not the Godfather of Harlem, but then he did come up in one of the episodes of How to Become a Mob yeah, Boss yeah, with uh, <laughs> Lucas, cool. the Lucas character. Yeah. I was like, oh, have we seen him yet in the show? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I I'm sticking back. But anyway, but anyway, you know, we're, we're diverging. But uh, yeah, so that's why I, that's why I'm a little disappointed at these first two episodes. They didn't really, you know, hook me in and, and say let's go. But but there's enough there to say, okay, let's let's see the third episode and see right, and see if this gives me what the what the multi story is. So, jump out. so the minute I hit thirteen subscribers then basically. Uh <laughs> potentially the <laughs> this show ain't gonna do it. Uh this is quite interesting. Okay, let's see how that maybe it ends better and all that. You can let us know if that's the case or not. Uh sure. this next one here, AMC Plus. We've already talked about AMC Plus, but when we do usually it's pretty good for the most part. Been a while. It's been uh, a while. I mean, oh, AM, if you have AMC, obviously they watch these shows. Yeah. But uh, Blackberry. This was actually a, a movie that came out earlier this year. Very, you know, limited mm -hmm. release. I got they broke it up into three parts, three episodes. Um, you know, added some deleted scenes and stuff like that. This one here, pretty much, uh, it's a, based on a true story, you know, loosely based, I'm sure. On mm -hmm. um, the 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 Blackberry, right? the creation of Blackberry and the people behind it. Of course, Blackberry was before the iPhone was the, you know, business tool. The the first really major smartphone out there uh, until Apple just crushed them. Uh, beyond that, and BlackBerry's refusal to kind of go with the times and the technology, mm. how it was evolving. But yeah, it tells us you know, it was very comedic. Uh, actually, this one I actually enjoyed, it and I actually watched it all the way through because you know I think I think the runtime was like two twenty total when we put it all together. So like watching a long film, and, Probably, and, and this yeah. is a movie. So I'm like, yeah, you know, why not just watch it all together? Um, AMC Plus usually releases things early anyway. Um, but I like that it was funny, as well told, very well paced. I like the two the main character, one who I forget his name, who you know created the the, the mind behind the BlackBerry, and then he teamed up with a an executive uh, that left his company to help him kind of build the business. He knew how to build the business, and uh, the juxtaposition between the personalities of the two is actually pretty good. Um, but I enjoyed it. It was funny. Uh, it was it was light. You know, it was informative, and you know, it was interesting. I said I didn't know much of BlackBerry except what it was at the time. Wasn't into, into the cell phones quite yet in terms of the smartphones, but uh, I enjoyed it. Chewy. Um. My only thing is, obviously, you could tell this was a movie broken up into pieces because it, it lacked a little cohesion. Sure. As, as you know, where you see true limited, limited series and they break it up and they give you enough detail. This one kind of glosses over a lot of the big details, right? 
because it, it was a two-hour movie at the end of the day, and so yeah. they, they couldn't add more content to kind of flush out uh, the rise and, and the fall. Uh, but they just hit the high notes, essentially, right? Who these characters were is the, the beginning, middle, and then right at the, right at the end when the iPhone launched, and, and that was the end of the company. Yeah. Like, well, you know, it took a while, but that was that was. Oh, well, yeah, that was the beginning of the end. I mean, essentially, yeah. that, that really yeah. technically that buried him. <laughs> yeah, came out yeah. And stuff, but I mean, but yeah. I remember, I remember, I, I had my 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 BlackBerry back in the day uh, at work, and and the, the thumbs and everything, mm-hmm. so. Uh, but then, everybody yeah, had back in the day. Let's be honest. Yeah, like, that, that I mean, was yeah. default. Yeah. Everyone had. I mean, it for it. email, that yeah. portable email is what it was, right? A phone and, and your email. I, that's what it was. It wasn't for scroll. It wasn't for watching movies or anything like that. Exactly. But we weren't at that point yet. Well, right, um, exactly. And that's not the two fault. And, and what they yeah. call the uh, Crackberry was the thing back then. Yeah, yeah because yeah. everyone like in meetings and, and yeah. stuff was always looking down. You hear the clicking. Yeah, uh, with the thumbs. And that was stuff the precursor and, and, to you know people yeah. going out and bury their heads in the phone. This is how it is. And yeah, it, it started much, with yeah. that, right? And that was the, <laughs> the revolution. Um, yeah, yeah I thought, but you're right, which is why I watched it together. Yeah, because, because so you're gonna it, watch it, it, watch it as, as a, as it, a movie. It, didn't, it yeah. really didn't touch on at all to why they refused to, why why he was so set in in his way or the highway mentality as far as as far as his product, right? Because he yeah. refused. To change until people said you change or you're out, and by that time it's too late. Yeah, this could have been um, a really good series, absolutely. Yeah, um, yes, but again, but yes. to be fair, it was done as a movie, so it didn't create. Yeah, that's why. So, that's why. That's right, why I'll yeah. forgive it because it wasn't exactly. meant to be done as a series. It was just broken up to be a limited series, but yeah. it's still enjoyable. And like I said, the, the one, the one, his best friend, the guy with the headband. Yeah. You know. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought that was a gimmick. No, no that was his shtick, man. Yeah, that was <laughs> and <laughs> very smart because he got out at the peak. And so he yeah, is a right. very well off individual, yeah, to say the least. He got out with Blackberry, you know, the stock was at his peak. And he's like, peace out. And good for him because it, it tanked after that. Um, but yeah, it's very good. It's entertaining. I, I enjoyed it. Like I said, but again, if you're going to watch it, I would recommend watching it. Give yourself two and a half hours, whatever, and watch it sequentially. That's really going to get the best, the best out of it. Uh, this next one here, Murder at the End of the World uh, on FX slash Hulu. Looking forward to this one. I think it's based off a book, maybe not. But it's a, a murder mystery uh, revolving uh, one girl very uh, who's young and she's incredibly smart. She's a genius level, a hacker, if you will, who begins to kind of look into cold cases, right? She's into this murder mystery kind of thing. Um, and then gets a special invite by a kind of a Elon Musk type character. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess who invites her I and mean, a bunch of other individual great minds to you know some kind of convention out in the middle of nowhere I think Iceland or something. Yeah, and yeah. A, a murder occurs and now it's a new mystery to solve. Essentially, just to, you know, kind of paintbrushing really quickly there. But um, this one here, I was looking forward to this one. I like a good, I like a good murder mystery. You know, Agatha Christie kind of ish. And this one wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. Almost like for you, a beacon. I get the same sense for me anyway. You may think differently, but just it was very slow. I like the characters. It was building up, but we haven't quite gotten there yet and this is only seven episodes right so So i'm hoping keep that in mind yeah things will pick up um it was well made um i enjoyed it i like her as a character i think she's really good but Mm. i don't know i'm not quite there yet it's not i'm not Mm. saying i recommend at the same time if you like murder mysteries give it a shot they've only only dropped two it's a weekly release on thursdays no tuesdays um yes hulu so it's a Slight recommendation, well made. It's just it needs to pick up the pace a bit, Chewy. Uh no, I agree. Um, it, it, it's it's going a, a tad too slow, and especially after find out it's only seven episodes, and so you know we're already you know third of the way in. Um, I, I, I you know I I think I'm not sure which I enjoy more the flashbacks where she's actually going through the cold case. For this case, I think I like the flashbacks better. The, yeah, the flashbacks her, have more to it with her and Bill, yeah. right? And and yeah. tracking them. That, I guess that when they first hooked up in their first their first uh, mission, which is the mate- the source material for her book, which is why she's so famous, right? Because she wrote a book, uh, the Silver Cross John Doe, something like that. It, it, that's part of the the show itself. But um, and, and, and so it's, it's a little, you know, I'm not jarring, but confusing way where he, he brings in, like, he brings in five people, his wife brings in five people, and what's the connection between them? What's what's the point, right, of, of her choosing five people to bring in, and, and how, what what is Bill's contribution to this group is is, is still a, a, a little uh, unknown to me at this point, especially after two episodes. But, right. but which, which it, you know, leads a lot to potentially chew on the next five episodes, so that's fine. Hopefully, hopefully. But um, it needs to get there. 
It needs to get yes. there quickly. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm still on it. I'm still going to watch it. Um, hopefully it gets a little better, but it's one that I'm kind of like, okay, let's see. This probably would have been better release as a you know full like streamer Netflix eight episodes kind of deal to kind of jump get the jump on that. But mm. yeah, it's just, I, I was I was hoping for more. A little disappointed, but again, not a bad show. I don't want to paint in that light. Uh, this next no, one, no, no. Um, Criminal Code. This is a uh, Netflix. I'm talking about Netflix already. Jeez, uh, Netflix. Uh, they dropped a bunch of shit uh, this week. This being one of them. There's a uh, Brazilian show, uh, kind of a uh, you know. Brazilian. That's it, Daniel. Uh, kind of a, a police procedural with a cop who, you know, his partner mm-hmm. got killed by a gang, and now he's opportunity to go, you know, find who done it, kind of thing. Um, this gang. Yeah, these are these are bank heist. robbers essentially yeah. that they're bringing uh, between and then between uh, the border of Mexico, uh, Mexico, sorry, Mexico, um, uh, sorry Brazil Paraguay. and Paraguay. Yeah, yeah, yeah dangerous um, crime gang. They, they do a bunch of heists, and there's a connection between them and who killed this partner because it happened after they uh, broke in and let like 27 people off from from prison. They broke them out. Who the these people used in this heist? Um, mm-hmm. This one here, I gave a couple episodes, and I'm out. I'll be honest with you. It, it just was not working for me at all. I don't know. It, it just seemed off. Um, the main character is unmemorable, so unmemorable, not likable. So I kind of like the main guy. Why am I watching to begin with? And that's that's what it boiled down to, Chewy. No, no, no. no. Uh, this is not. I'm gonna recommend. I've seen some better shows, much better. I've enjoyed Way shows. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and and though we've talked on on this show, we've played a couple of present ones that were very good. Uh, what was the what was the one? It was a three season run uh, with the island? Oh. The one of the island? Um, not thirties. Not thirties. Thirty. Three three hundred. I mean, it was like one of these. Whatever. But yeah, yeah, damn. yeah. You you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that yeah. was much better. Yeah, and there's a, there's even another one uh, that was based on the Petrobras uh, fiasco in Brazil. But um, uh, this is uh, that was called the mechanism, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But this is this is not this is not up there with those shows, and so disappointing because I you know when I see Netflix present, I expect better quality. This was meh. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's just kind probably of, being that's probably being general. That's probably a three percent. Is the show? Can you show you talking about? Yes, a three percent. Yes, three percent. Yeah. Okay, I, yeah. that was a very yeah, interesting show. Out. Yeah, that's a good yeah. show. So yeah, yeah, this was this was really not worth your time at all. It just it just didn't click, and I gave it two episodes. It just was not working. Uh, yeah. Let's stay with Netflix. Let's go to uh, uh, Servura Eterna. This one mm. here is for those who are familiar with uh, Sabura, which was a three-season run Italian show. Very good show. Much on the very good show on the, the Italian underground world, the Italian underground, the gangs and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. This one here mm-hmm. is a. Well, I mean, I, mean, I, I, I think we're we're over over simplifying the show. I mean, it was no, more yeah, just underground. Said, it was it course, was between the it was mafia elements, but it was also the Catholic Church, yeah. the politicians. Uh, a, a particular group uh, out of the Austria region and mm-hmm. gypsies, right? So all these different factions it's working together. It's kind of like a, a gangs of London esque yeah. kind of kind of. Yes, those, those I would think. With without that, right? the yeah. without the the over the top violence, course, I think. which <laughs> which makes it awesome. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's, 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 this is a, a sequel, so some returning characters. Yes, yeah, this is three years three yeah. years after the events of the end of, of, of the of the the Subway. Right, Subway. So we got, yeah, we've got the two rival gangs. We got, of course, the Catholic Church and the politicians. And about that group, I don't know who's the dirtiest, <laughs> including the Catholic Church. Let's be honest. <laughs> um, so it is what it is. Uh, yeah. So they're, again, they're, I guess they'll back out of reposition themselves and all, et cetera, et cetera. So it's kind of a good crime show. Um, mm-hmm. This one here, you know, dropping his eight episodes. Um, I'm trying to think if. If you haven't seen the original, you can pick up and watch this. Yeah, and yeah. I think you can. So if you I mean, did they it, make references to to yes. the to characters and events from the front? But they, but this is like three years later, right? So this technically, is, yeah. if you haven't seen the the first three season run, you're not going to be lost. You don't need to see it to, to get caught up. You can just pick it up from where it says. Obviously, there's a internal strife between some of the gypsy gangs mm-hmm. uh, for power. Uh, there's always a power vacuum from from the events of the of the first series. And you can pick it up from there. And that's why you really need to know. But exactly. Pick it's, up what's going it's, on. It's a good watch. I enjoyed it. I think it's good. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, it needs Gangs of London type of action. Because the action it gives you here, the Lost shootouts are, are so badly made. They're really bad. Uh, but whatever. The show's not about yeah. that. And I get it. But I mean, yes. it, just be forewarned. It's very amateurs when it comes to the gunfighting scenes. A couple here. I love, I love Stormtrooper action. Yeah. And, you know, no Maybe. one changes the magazine. It's it's whatever. It's it's kind of a, an 80s style kind of thing. <laughs> well, um, I, I, I missed that. On the, but, but the lack of actually hitting people sometimes. It's, oh, no. It's that would, yeah. No, no one can aim. Well, I, no, I, actually, I take the fact. It's sometimes. Because, well, like, in the one. Times. Yeah. Yes. Because there's times where, like, with the guys in the motorcycle, when they, when they killed the, 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 uh, uh, the mafia head. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then so they didn't miss. 
Well, but, I mean, it was easy. Uh, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But uh, yeah, as far as that. But everything else is good drama. Again, the into this, again, it's purely focusing on the criminal world. So it's interesting, kind of Godfather, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's enjoyable. Like I said, if you haven't seen the first three seasons, I would recommend watching if you can. But this is one you can pick up. I don't, I don't think you're really going to miss a beat. Um, yeah. But I enjoyed it. So this is good. Hopefully, they, they, it gets renewed. And what I'm almost done with that one, it gets renewed down the road. Um, this one here, I didn't see. Uh, I just didn't have time. Uh, I wasn't that interested anyway, but whatever. Maybe it's good. And that's nothing to see here uh, on yeah. Netflix. Is a, it's a comedy. Uh, I, I want to say it's a Latino comedy. Mexican. 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 Okay. Yes, it is. Um, one of the characters is a comedian. And he's Pinch away. Him. Yeah, Pinch away. <laughs> and he has a friend who's um, uh, a well, posse, I think. His friend is an, uh, I think. Me, yeah. Well, yeah, so, I think so. Because he, he uses the hair and crutches. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think, uh, yeah but so. the main character is essentially was born blind. Uh, or, oh, he's or, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. No, yeah. He was born blind. Or, or, or maybe he may see. But, I mean, he's blind. He's blind as a bat. Maybe he's blind, I guess. Would be the best way. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So what, I, this, but, uh, I think this here. So this any this worth it? This is actually pretty funny, man. Really? I mean, okay. Yes. It, well, I mean, I mean, obviously, if you don't know Spanish, it, you you can't right. watch this stuff because it's it's, it's going to be funny. Sure. We've seen several comedies where you try to dub it, and it's it, 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 sometimes it works and sometimes that I haven't tried. I suspect it may not work because the judge you lose something in in the delivery when hearing a dub versus okay you you listening to it. And now it's this week since we know Spanish, and now it's we're right. we're Spanish inclined. On this particular channel, uh, we enjoy it, and we can get we see the jokes and we get it. And so, uh, he's just a kid trying to make out on his own as a blind person with his cerebral palsy friend, right? Um, it, it, there's this one scene where he does some stand-up comedy just for just for shits and giggles. The guy's hilarious. <laughs> okay, okay. Right. Sorry, I missed and, it. And so, yeah. Well, it's a, uh, it's a light week this week, so maybe I might jump in. Plus, with extra time off, I might jump in and watch this one because it is a light week coming up next week, so. Okay. I didn't, I didn't, okay. There's, there's several Mexican shows that are not good, and there's oh, about yeah. some ten novelas and and some serious. So we see some good, some good Mexican quality TV, but it's a good mixed bag. But this is probably one one of the better ones because it's it is it is actually pretty fun. Okay, fair enough. I'm surprised to hear you say. Okay, I was expecting you to come hmm. and say you gave up after two episodes. So no, no, no. Okay. I actually enjoyed it. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I, guess I, I just I didn't have to, have to sacrifice. Something had to go. <laughs> so many shows, and it just it wasn't going to happen. I mean, uh, a lot of comedy uh, play off play, play off on, on on his disability, right? Okay. Uh, so and he plays out of himself, right? In one of his one of his skits, that, that that's what he's picking on, saying, you know, I can. I can call people disabled and stuff, but you can't because I'm in and you're not. Right, of course. Just stuff like that. Making fun of your race, right? Because, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so exactly. I get it. Okay, so maybe I'll give that one a shot uh, this week. Um, next one, I stay with Netflix. Again, they, they had a big run here. Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. Uh, this was an animated show with 30 minute episodes. So it's kind of a quick watch. This one here, of course, if you're familiar with the source material, or even the movie that came out with. Um, uh, Sarah, Michael, Sarah, and you know Chris Evans, Mary, uh, yeah, Mary, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, yeah, Aubrey Plaza, uh, Aubrey Plaza. Larson, yeah. I mean everybody, yeah, everybody, it's a everybody huge was, cast. That was directed it. Schwartzman, yeah, yeah, it's a huge cast. Yeah, so this is a the cult, cult like status at this point, right? So kind of, yeah, exactly. One of those kind of cult films, and, and you know, it's uh, you know, it's, it's gotten more tension over the years, but. You know, it's an animated series. They brought back the voice cast, so there's still the same voice cast uh, for most everybody. Of so which, yep. is, which is interesting, but it's more this is kind of more of a reimagining. It's not a, a reboot of the film or the, or the source material, per se. Uh, um, no, no, because uh, when you watch the first episode, you you think, uh, oh, this is just like the movie, right? I mean, right. obviously some, they, they cut some things out and made some small alterations oh, here and there, right? Um, but but. From that, but the way when the first episode ends, it completely starts deviating 180 degrees. Oh, because, yeah, yeah. It's not even a lost uh, program at that point, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. actually, he, he goes bring, missing. You bring in the yeah. seven. Yeah, you he, bring he, in the he, seven. Yeah, he goes missing, and then, you know, his. No, the, and then in the second up. episode, the whole the whole church scene was just. Yeah, no. <laughs> was it relicensing in the wing winning part? What was it? What song? She sang the song. The song was just so so over the top. It was ridiculous. Oh my god, what song it was! But it's, it's a famous song. But either way, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Listen, it's it's just, it's it's wacky, uh, but it's charming at the same time. It's an, it's mm-hmm. like that they kind of did something different with the show. Like it's not a you know play by play of the movie. Uh, yeah, it, but it's not. That's what I was. That's what I was expecting. That's right. I, I, so I, I saw. Yeah. I saw when they when they started making these changes. I'm like, oh, okay, wow. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah, good. Okay. You know, he deviates far mm-hmm. from the film, right? And, you know, Scott Pilgrim, who uh, again he goes missing, so his potential girlfriend or whatever, someone he meets, potential of interest is finding out, finds out that he's not really dead. They think he's dead, and you know, she's obviously going back to her old boyfriends who have you know motive potentially to have him disappear or captured or whatever. 
Uh, but it's done the same way. It's it's very unique. The movie was very unique, and so was the comic. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of uh, taking this and then the animation. It's very an old school anime, right? Yes. You know, so it's got the cool old school sound effects, and when they're fighting, because a big part of the game and the movies and all that is when they have these these fight scenes, and it's almost like a Street Fighter esque kind of fight scene with this old, old school you know, sound effects and the graphics mm -hmm. and all that. Um, mm -hmm. I found it interesting. It's funny. It's entertaining. I mean, I, I wasn't just not great. I didn't love it per se, but it's, I'm very enjoyable. At 30 minutes is a pretty good watch. I'm going. I think I'm three or four in. I found I liked it. I, I was entertained. It's, it's, but it's not for everybody at all. Uh, you have to be into the anime stuff and probably somewhat familiar with the source material. Chew your thoughts. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, I, this is nostalgic because I enjoyed mm -hmm. that that movie. Mm -hmm. It was a very interesting, very unique, and with so many different uh, uh, actors. Uh, and it it, it it was just something about it, right? It was silly, but it was but it was still a fun watch. It was still a neat watch, right? And the fight scenes in the movie are are, are just you know video game like. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but uh, this kind of takes it from there, but it makes it, I guess, in a way better because it's not this it's not just retelling the movie. It's actually they've, they've changed it either because of source material or they've just taken that artistic liberties to make it an, a, a unique and interesting story still. Along the lines of the movie, but not quite it. Right. And now that we're getting a uh, reimagined right now of, of Scott Pilgrim, right? Which, which I enjoy. I think that good is for them to, for taking that kind of making that choice. You know, not giving a same old, same old. So I appreciate that a lot. So yeah, I recommend. Yeah. It. Recommend. Not a high recommend, but I recommend it. Um, last one. This one I was excited about. That's Apple TV. It's Apple TV, so I get excited about that. But we have Monarch: Legacy of Monsters, of course, uh, continuing the stories which we see in the films of the Godzilla and Kong and Godzilla versus Kong. Um, so it's, you know, so obviously it's high production. Apple's the one to has, has enough deep pockets to make it look good, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but this one here, following uh, the events of all the other films, we have uh, almost like two ongoing storylines taking place in the 1950s and in current times for the most part. We have this young girl, uh, Japanese descent, whose father's, uh, you know, disappeared. And she, as she's investigating what's going on, finds out that he had a secret family in Japan and finds out that he was actually involved or has knowledge of Monarch, which is, if you've seen the films or the company behind, you know, you know, the investigation, uh, you know, and the, not developing of the monsters, but who knew about it and we're trying to kind of harness that and learn about it. And in this, and then she, and then it goes back to the story in the 1950s where the grand, her grandmother and how she began investigating and was uh, teaming up with someone like Wyatt Russell, of course, Kurt Russell's mm -hmm. son. Who is, it's, I like the idea of ta having Wyatt and Kurt play the same character, right? Just a younger and older version. I thought that was cool. Um, but wait, although I'll say the timeline's a little off because it's 1952. He's probably in his 20s and now, which will make him close to 90. Uh, so it, or 80 or whatever. It's pretty old if you look at it. That's 73 years in 1952, right? That's seven years. He's already 20, at least 20. So that doesn't add up, but whatever. It's a small yeah. complaint, not a big deal. Maybe he was a teenager. I doubt that. But uh, that being said, this one here, it surprised me because this did something that none of the films can do, and I get it. Because the films, you want to feature the monsters, right? Ah, uh, you go see Godzilla, you want to see Godzilla. <laughs> Duh. Uh, but the human element has always been nonsense in all, any of these films. It just has. This one here kind of reverses it, where it shows you some monster stuff. Very cool, of course. You got to have that. But the focusing on the human characters is interesting, and I enjoyed it this time around. I like what's going on. I like the characters. I like the, the Russell character, the young version of Russell. We just barely saw a little bit of Kurt Russell at the end, um, mm -hmm. dropping two episodes, mind you. Um, and I think the next one's coming out on Wednesday. I'm not sure if it's a Wednesday release or doing Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. No, it's Wednesday because Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Okay, okay. Um, but normally, normally it drops on Friday. Oh, Friday. Okay, fair enough. I figured I saw it like Wednesday. Um, but this one I really liked. I enjoyed it, man. I got some cool monster stuff that looks really good. High quality, you know, the CGI is up this, this movie quality. But the story behind it, I, I really enjoyed it. I like the characters and I'm surprised. Come on, sakes. I already just thought it was going to be some cool monster stuff and I'll get excited because I like that kind of shit. But no, man, this is a good show. You can take the monsters out of it. If they didn't show any monsters, I'd still be interested in the mystery behind the father and what's going on and, you know, discovering how, what, how the father's involved. I enjoyed all that. Chew your thoughts. No, I, I'm on board. I mean, I really, really dug this show. I mean, it's given me a good mystery to follow and, and kind of and see what's going on. Even though we, we've seen the movies, we kind of know uh, what the moral story is between uh, the God, the two Godzillas uh, and then the Skull Island people and the uh, or Kong, Skull Island, which is obviously also more of a prequel as well because that, that happened in the 70s and, and the timeline. Um but this is taking, giving us all that history from the 50s to the, to the uh, early 60s, 
uh, the little bit of seventies. They gave us no flashback with the with the what they call G Day or Godzilla Day when he, yeah. he attacked San Francisco. All right, and so all these events kind of come together uh, as they're telling the story through these various timelines and various flashbacks, and so very interesting. Um, and, and I like that how they tie they tie in Soul Island with uh, the John Goodman character. I can't remember his yeah. name. It starts off with like a scene with him, and yeah, from there. Yeah, yeah. with the, with some tapes and mm-hmm. stuff that he threw in, and I guess a, a fisherman found in two thousand three. Now I'm still confused as far as how this fisherman is related to if he's the father that that disappeared, or if he just some random guy that found the package and gave it to this guy. Uh, it still hasn't been made clear, but. That aside, it still, it still weaves together all these different movies and these timelines. I'm trying to like, give us now a complete a picture and story of uh, from inception to where we are now and where where this show is going to take us into the in the Godzilla universe, monsterverse. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I guess I, I'm surprised. It's better than I thought it was going to. I knew, I think, mm-hmm. I knew I was going to like it, but I was like, man, it's like legitimately a good show. It's not just. Yes. You know, cool shit on screen, which is what you expect out of these movies, right? None of them have, mm-hmm. having the, none of them have been great movies, but they've been cool. You see King Kong mm-hmm. fight Godzilla. Come on. Who doesn't like that? But yeah, to have the human element there, be that the forefront of it and succeed, that's impressive. And I think that's the kind of thing what happens when you have a series and you can really develop that. Right? You now, to, now, now the, you know? the, the, where is the plot hole? I'm not sure if it's a plot hole, but I would say, uh, spoiler alert. So we see the grandmother, um, I think it was in 1959 in Kazakhstan, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I guess, was, I'm not sure if the guy with her was, I think we're still, I don't think they're married yet. Or were they married? In I th- 59. I they, were, they met in 52. I think they were married. They, 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 there was three of them. It was, you know, uh, Wyatt Russell, who was, you know. Well, they the, met in 52 he was a military in the Philippines. Yeah. And then, and then, 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 but the first flashback we got is 19th again on Kazakhstan, mm-hmm. right? And so that incident underground with the little eggs or whatever those things. Mm-hmm. Those are cockroaches. But so in between, we're, for 52, so, you know, <laughs> at no time they make mention of their kids. I, I, yeah, I, and so they, you have they, to assume that they they, they but they have but, a kid and, already. So yeah, yeah all right. so I mentioned nothing, obviously. and so you see, like, okay, what? She had a kid. Oh, she's the grandmother. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a conversation early on when it introduced these characters when the you know Russell's character was like, I don't want to get married. I don't want to have kids, and mm-hmm. and they all two look at each other. Like, obviously, they're together, and some that look at each other like what we did, or I, I, that's the impression I got. Like, okay, yeah. they've gone through that. So, but what a, either way, so I'm assuming they had a kid with the seven. That would make, well, no, you can't assume because it, it, well, they have to, otherwise the whole show doesn't work, right? Because that's the grandmother. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah like, geez, that's, my, that's my grandmother in that right. picture so, or something to that effect. I'm but sure but how do you know? But, 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 again, but how do you know it's a grandmother if she died in 1959? How does she know? Well, she doesn't because know. Because of pictures? She, yeah, she doesn't know that's a grandmother. No. We know it's a grandmother. No, she says. She says. Oh, then I don't, then I don't know. But yeah, that, maybe, that, maybe. That's, maybe. that's my enough. point. Yeah. Okay, it, fair it, enough. I, 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 missed, I missed that. I totally missed it. That's the case. I missed. She said it. it. That's my oh, grandma. Okay. That's how she recognized it because she actually saw the picture of the father. Well, this is and, a picture and, of grandma. And one of the kids saying, "That's my that's my grandma." And then that picture, right? It was this one picture with the the one with the okay. foot. Okay. Right, the, right, but the, she's in the Godzilla footprint. Yes, in a oh. ditch with some. Well, this is an old picture of them. I mean, it's too young, you know, carrying the baby. Maybe it's possible. I get again. You know, awesome. she can't be older than seven. How could she remember? Oh, right, whatever. Okay, so there, there, there's a little, there's, there's a little disconnect there. Fair enough. Okay, I just caught it. And I was like, wait a minute, hold on. I'm thinking, well, how could she know? If she, but we see her in, in theory. We see her die in 1959. Now maybe, maybe she did. Maybe they, maybe they, they gave us a red herring and, and she escaped miraculously. Who knows? But but aside from that. It's still still pretty good. Little little yeah, minor. Yeah, I'm definitely interested there. in what's going to happen with the show. And what's going on next? So yeah, really well done. So this is this mm-hmm. is this is my pick of the week as far as the shows that are watching this one. If you got Apple Plus, good for you. This is one you need to add to your list, no doubt. It's really enjoyable. Even if you're not big of those films, it's okay. You don't have to be, right? You, yeah. you don't have to watch those films, none of them, to really start where the show goes. You really don't, because um, the other movies are just a monster let loose. That's really what it is. It's, let's just be honest. So there's not a whole lot there in those films that's going to deter you from really understanding what's going on in this particular show. So. <laughs> Yeah, but I highly recommend, enjoyable, good job. Apple Plus again doing what they do best and really being one of the premier streamers as far as I'm concerned, uh, consistently. So good for them. Um, next week, next week's like, let's get inside before we sign off here. Uh, I think five things coming out, four or five things. Let's start with on um, the 20th is uh, stamped from the beginning. This is a documentary, uh, dealing with uh, I guess uh, racism, right? Along those lines, and, and things and put in place to illustrate that, or something along those lines. I didn't see mm-hmm. the trailer for it. 
Um, but was- I haven't seen the trailer, but that's the, the, that's the gist of, that I got. Yeah, so, you know, as, I know. So one of his history, history documentaries. Right, we've seen it 100 times. I get it, but maybe, again, if, as long as it's done well, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. So let's see what, what kind of new perspective they may bring that we're not aware of. So looking forward to that. Uh, we have Fargo um, this season. No? Season five, yeah, five, yeah, on Hulu. The fifth and an anthology series. Yeah, and that's a cool. It is. It, it's like it's always it's always good. Uh, I'm a big fan of the show, and it's one you don't have to watch for the most part. Any of the other ones, right? You can just, it's, again, it's an anthology series. Uh, there's some my like, connections at times, but for the most part, you probably start season five and not have to worry about it. So if you haven't seen mm-hmm. it, I recommend you watch it. If you enjoy this one, then go back and watch it because it's a really good show. I uh, enjoyed mm-hmm. it, and, and if you guys remember the film way back in the day, uh, Billy Bob Thornton was in there, I think. Um, yeah. They- yeah, it was a, it was a good Bob movie. Bob Thornton. Yeah. No, he was in the was first the season. He wasn't. He wasn't oh, in the movie. I'm thinking, hey, who's in the You think of series. Joe, uh, Joe, uh, 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 um, oh God, I don't know how to put his last name. Uh, he was in the Con Air. Uh, who was yeah. that guy? Um, Steve, Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. Joe. Steve. He was. Yes. Uh, yeah, I know, you got confused. Um, but yeah, Ben Joe was really good show. I just want to. Yeah, you guys should be watching. I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, there's a movie on Netflix, uh, which. <laughs> roll the die, you know how that goes. Uh, it's an animated film with Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler, roll the die, see how that goes. Um, but it's an animated film, and this is a, a story about uh, the last day of school, told from the perspective of the two pets, one being a lizard, which he plays. Uh, Bill Burr plays the other, I think it's a turtle, I think. Yes. I actually yeah. heard good things about this, to be honest with you. Uh, I got a chance to see it early. I didn't get to see it, but I heard good things about it. It's actually pretty decent. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. They're shopping on the 21st. Um, and on the 22nd, again, on Netflix, we have uh, Squid Game. The Challenge is the reality show based off the incredibly popular show, which was made popular because of the watch list. Because before anybody was talking about Squid Games and what it, people thought it was like seafood, not a restaurant, I said on the show, this was a much watched show. Then <laughs> all of a sudden, it became the biggest show in Netflix history. And I still haven't seen the check for Netflix, the bastards, cheap bastards. Um, but I deserve credit because I was one of the ones here early on saying, this is a show you need to watch. And everyone watched it apparently after that. Uh, but it's coming out, you know, obviously, there's a reality based on, the, based on the games from the film. Uh, it looks actually pretty interesting. It looks pretty cool because they, they accurately depict some of the games. Obviously, no one's dying, of course. Um, but yeah, some of the, like, with the stop, the red light, you got a green light uh, game with the big, tall you mm-hmm. know, robot, whatever. Very cool. Looks interesting. You're a fan of the show. You probably should be watching this one. And then without, I'm, no, I thought it was it without any other violence. Well, obviously, right. It's a toned down version, right. Hopefully the drama behind the scenes, because I think there's even a scene where they're in a trailer where they're like, uh, you have to make a choice. You have to eliminate someone before any game came up, eliminate someone right away. So that was kind of interesting. Um, so that, that could be fun. And then uh, Disney Plus. Eh. Uh, the 22nd, uh, it is the holidays. It is Thanksgiving, which no one gives a shit about. Fine. That being said, a Christmas release, the Naughty Nine. Um, I doubt I'll be watching this one. I'm a Chewy, yeah, family. I'm sure you'll be watching it. Is it a series or is it a, a movie? Uh, is it a se- uh, um? Actually, I don't. I, honestly, I don't. It could be a series. I, I'm not sure. Okay. I, th- I thought it was a movie. I may be wrong. I like I said, I don't know much about it. I know it was coming. I mean, I heard it was coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, but that one's you know for the holiday season. You know, whatever. It's the first big holiday release, I guess. Why not? It's on Disney. I get it. Um, I may give it a shot. I don't know, true. You, I know you're likely to watch it more than I. Yeah, I'll probably watch yeah. it. I mean, like I said, yeah. I've, been, I've been watching um, the Santa Clauses, right? The series, right? right exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know there's a couple of shows coming out uh, for the holidays that I'm going to watch that we'll talk about probably next week. No. But um, yeah. yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, like I said, well, maybe I give it a shot. But it's not a big week, but it's the holidays, so it is what it is. Um, yeah. but still a lot, a lot to chew on between now and then. That being said, that's the list. That's what it is for this week. Again, so there's plenty of stuff to, to you know, sink your teeth into. Uh, no pun intended with Thanksgiving coming in. Um, again, join us here every Sunday, every week. Don't want to hear. I don't know what's on. This is what we're here for. Tune into us weekly. Subscribe, like, etc. Chewy, have a good Thanksgiving, and we'll see you guys next week. Peace out.